Hi, it's Laura from I Heart Planners, and today I'm going to show you how to make this bookmark sticker for your planner. You don't need a cutting machine. Um, you can just, you know, it's just four straight cuts. Um, you don't need any, any um, expensive software. I'm going to show you how to use, make it with some free software. And what I did is I just wanted to keep track of certain things that I wanted to do each day. So I just put a little checkbox with the day of the week below it, and I check it off whenever I do it. Um, you can make this any size you want, uh, use any font you want, just you can put it on a bookmark in your planner, on a page in your planner, on the outside of it, just um, whatever you'd like. You could even not even use a sticker, but just print it on regular paper and maybe laminate it and check it off with a marker and erase it. So um, it's totally up to you how you want to use it. So what we're going to use is Silhouette Studio software. Now, first of all, this is a Silhouette is a cutting machine if you're not familiar with it. You do not need a cutting machine to make this. Also, this software, you don't have to have Silhouette to do, download the free version of the software. So you can just go to silhouette.com, um, silhouetteamerica.com and download the free version and just um, print things that you make with it. So. I'm going to just go to File, New. I've just opened Silhouette so that we're starting with a brand new file. Now, some of you, um, you may not, it may start with a different page size for you. So if so, click this little icon up there and go here and make sure you select um, the size that you want, which for most of you, I'm imagining, is letter size. Um, and I printed mine onto Avery sticker paper. I'll link in the blog post to the kind that I use. But again, you could print it on anything. So the first thing you want to do is we want to draw a rectangle. We're actually going to remove this rectangle at the very end. But this is just going to be, you know, the basis for our sticker. All right. So I just kind of um, I clicked the rectangle tool here. I clicked and dragged and made myself a rectangle. Um, that is not the precise measurements that I want. So the best way I think to get the precise measurements, click on this arrow, click on the rectangle, and then this little tool, this symbol right here, I don't even know what that symbol is supposed to be, but click on that, and here you can specify exact dimensions, which I think is super handy. The first thing you wanna do is uncheck this lock aspect because that will keep the ratio the same and you don't really want that if you're specifying. So for me, I want mine to be 2.4 inches, but you can do whatever size you would like. So I just type in 2.4 right there. Click in the next one, type in, I want mine to be eight inches wide and click apply. You do have to click apply and it automatically changes my rectangle to be that size. We're going to work on um, one bookmark at a time and it's going to be really fast to duplicate them because I'll be able to print um, three of these on a page. All right. So first thing we want to do, if we look at our picture here, um, we're going to go, we're going to make something pretty similar to this. Um, so we're going to start with that, um, the text and then we'll, we'll add other stuff. So I'm just going to, I just click this text guy. I just click over there and I'm going to type in my first text. It's not the the font that I want that's fine all right so then I'm going to highlight that and I've got the text window here and the font that I used in that example was IS script ribbons I think that's a paid font you can google it it's only five dollars um, so um, but you can use any font that you'd like okay so the next thing is all right so you see how we have the red outline there, that means since this is a cutting software, um, anywhere that there is a red line, it wants to cut the software or cut the, the item. And we obviously aren't wanting to cut out that word. So if you go right here, um, click on this, it's supposed to be like a little blade. Um, you can say no cut. So that means it won't cut it. It stays red because over here you can change the outline of it and Okay, you have to think about this for a second, but I really, I just want the text to print, but I don't need the text to be outlined. So this little crosshatch symbol means no outline. Now, I know it disappeared, but that's because there's something there. It just has no fill and no outline, so it looks like nothing. But we can change the fill right here. So let's maybe go with a dark purple here. All right, so there we have the text. Now, I'm just dragging it over, clicking and dragging. 
I'm going to click on it to highlight it and I'm going to go back to this A symbol here and that'll let me change the size of the text because obviously that's a little bit too big. Um, you can just play around see what looks good. I think that one's pretty good. All right, now we want that to be in the center of the bookmark. So what I'm going to do is I clicked on that, then I hold on the shift key and I click on the rectangle. So I've got them both selected. The other thing you can do is just kind of click, hold down your mouse and drag and select both of them. And then I love this little menu right here. Um, it looks like, I guess, three rectangles. This is the align menu. And if you click align center, it automatically moves that text to the center of the rectangle. So that's a pretty handy way to keep everything lined up because I, I don't know, <laughs> I need everything to be lined up perfectly. So if you're a little OCD like me, you're going to love this menu. Okay. So then you take your, I'm just taking my up arrow and I'm going to move it close to the top of the bookmark. Um, so you can just move it around like that. Next, we want to make these little um, check boxes. So to do that, I'm going to click on the rectangle tool here. Then to make the check box, I'm going to press the shift key and then press my mouse and kind of drag the box out and holding on the shift key will make it um, constrain the proportions such that they're the same so that it'll make a square instead of a rectangle. So just let go. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, that looks like it might be a little big. Let's see because um, we want to fit seven of these. So if you, you can just click on it, then go to where you get that double arrow, then hold the shift key, push in a little bit while you're holding down your mouse key, and all right, I like that size. All right, so I'm still, I selected it again, and then again, keep in mind this is a cutting software, so it thinks you want to cut it, but we don't want to, so we can just come over here and say no cut. All right, and then um, again, I'm going to do no outline. It looks like it disappeared, but it didn't. <laughs> then go to this paint bucket thing. And let's do a light purple. Um, there's even advanced options. You can do custom colors, transparency. Like we could have made the exact same purple and made it transparent. So you can do so much with this software. Um, even, even if you don't have a cutting machine, you can do a lot with it. So we're just going to move it over to the side a little bit there the arrow keys. Now I'm just going to do Command C or Control C on a PC. Command V or Control V. Okay, I know it looks like they're putting them all out of order. That's okay. Um, all right, I'm just going to scoot these kind of basically where I want them. They're not perfect. I'm going to show you the magic way to line them up. Don't worry. All right, make sure we have our seven here. Can I get that close to the edge? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm clicking and dragging across all of them. Okay, so that's highlighted all of my squares plus this rectangle. And I don't want that rectangle in my selection, so I just hold down shift and click on the rectangle. So now we have just those boxes. I'm gonna arrow them over just a tiny bit, okay? Now we come back to probably my favorite feature, this little align window. First of all, okay, we want them lined um, like all not all lined up around the bottom so you can just click align bottom yay okay but we also want them spaced evenly so you just say space horizontally perfect now I'm gonna right click and say group so that's treating that as one object and that way um, I know they look pretty centered and they probably are but if you want to perfectly center them within the square you can click align center and there you go. All right, so the next thing we want to do, if we look at our example, is we just want to put those texts um, the, for the days of the week down there. So I'm just going to click the text guy right here. Click on my paper somewhere. Okay, now this, I know this is really huge, but we'll fix that in a second. Okay, then I'm selecting it all. I'm just holding shift and the arrow key. We have it all selected. And I think I used the font Babis New. That's one of my favorite fonts. Um, that's completely free font. You can get it on fontsquirrel.com. All right. Next, I'm going to go ahead and make this, um, I think 20 is probably a good size. All right. Again, it thinks we want to cut it because this is a cutting program. So just say no cut. Then we'll do the same thing we did over there. 
We're gonna take away the lines. I know it looks like nothing's there, but it is. And then fill it in, okay. Now, there's a couple ways that you can do this part. Um, one way would be, the most precise way would be to have each of these individual, um, each letter be its own text box, and then you would align it just like you did these boxes. Um, but an easier way is just to kind of eyeball it and space it out, and it's not going to be like absolutely perfect. So if you're OCD like me, you can use um, the align tools, or you can just do the shortcut like this to get it to get it pretty well aligned. I mean, if I space that over well, that looks pretty good, and then I'll need to delete that space. And really, I mean, I don't think the you'll notice when you just glance on the bookmark. If I hadn't told you, you might not have even known. So that's that's definitely the faster option. Um, okay, so I'm gonna um, zoom out just a little bit. Um, these these just let you zoom in and out. Um, I kind of want um, the the boxes in this this text to be closer to the words. So I'm gonna kind of grab all that and then I'm gonna hold on shift, click on the rectangle so that's not in my selection. And then I'm just pressing my up arrow key to kind of inch it, you know, um, you're, you're able to move it just a little bit that way and that's an easy way to move things. And it also means that you're not gonna move it side to side, which you don't wanna do. All right, great. And then to make the rest of the bookmark, you know, I might actually even move that up a tad bit more. It's you know totally up to you, okay. So to make the rest of the bookmark, I'm selecting everything and I'm gonna hold on shift to unselect the rectangle. And then I'm gonna hold it, all right, I'm not pressing anything. Then I hold the alt key and I'm moving my mouse over to this area and wait until you get that arrow with the plus sign. Then click your mouse key and drag on down and that's gonna duplicate. That's just, that's called a quick copy. It's a fast way to duplicate. See, and then I can keep on doing that to duplicate the entire bookmark. Okay, so all I did was change each of the text and then you'll see that um, that makes them uncentered when I change the text. So I'm just gonna, I clicked on this one, then I'm pressing the shift key and I'm clicking on each of the text. Then I'm gonna click on the rectangle. I'm gonna go back to the align and I'm gonna align center. So that lines them all up the way that we want them. Um, let's see, what's our next problem? Okay, our next problem is um, when we drag these over, we kind of, you'll, you'll see how they're not aligned perfectly, no problem. So we're just gonna grab each grouping and I'm actually gonna um, take off the, the text because we already aligned that and make sure that rectangle is in the selection and click align center. Okay, so then I'm gonna do it to each one so again, I'm taking my mouse, I'm dragging over to where I select the boxes, the text below them, and the rectangle. Selecting this rectangle tells the software to align it up in the center of that rectangle. That's why you need to do that. Okay. Then we only have one more thing to do here. I'm going to actually make this a little bit, zoom out just a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to take each of the, these groupings and I'm gonna, um, each of the brush teeth, or the task, with the boxes and the text, and I'm gonna get the rectangle out of my selection. And then um, you can either right click and say group, or do command, um, or control G, depending whether you're Mac or PC. And I'm gonna make each of these a group. I'm doing the command G that you can't see. I'm doing that to each one. You'll see why in just a second. So I gotta take the rectangle out of selection. And again, if you want to eyeball things, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just showing you how, if you really want to be super precise, how you can do that. Okay, next, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna move this down where I want it. So yeah, okay. 
So I'm going to select everything and unselect the rectangle. Then um, I'll have to group the top one as well. I forgot to do that. MG. Okay. Now they're all uh, groupings and I unselect the rectangle and then I can use space vertically and that spaces them perfectly. All right, so that's our whole, that's one of our bookmarks. So we just want to make copies. So I'm going to do Command C or Control C on a PC and Command V. And then, all right, what you want to do after you do that is go ahead and scoot it over. If you wait, it's not going to select the whole thing. I mean, you can group the whole thing if you'd like, though. Sometimes that makes it easier. Okay. And then I'm just cutting and pasting and I'm just these don't have to be lined up necessarily um, but it might be easier to cut if you lined them up more so whoops so um, you'll have to have a, um, each bookmark as a whole grouping and if you whoops um, I just made anytime you do something and you um, want to undo it command C. okay so we can select that and align it to the bottom and there's all you have to do. Um, you can, I'd recommend saving it in case you want to use it later and just click print and send it to your printer. And then I, um, this is a cut line, so I, I don't think that the, that it will necessarily print in red, but, um, and you could actually, you know, send this through your silhouette if you have a machine and use it cut that but I find it just as easy just to use my paper trimmer but um, we can take off the cut lines on um, each of the each of those if we'd like so no cut no cut and no cut and um, if you want to leave them there as a guide to cut cut from you can and you can take you can make them um, you can delete them entirely or you can make them disappear by doing the no line style before you print it. And that's all there is to it. Thanks.